teaching's hard, <laughs> but it's rewarding. And so, yeah, I'm not a good teacher, but there's always ways I can be better. And so try to get that, just like students, you know, I fail, try something, it doesn't work, but that teaches me, okay, don't try that again. <laughs> Maybe adjust a little. So, you know, have that same attitude of, you know, I'm gonna fail too. You know, that's what these points were on the board, by the way. If you saw me give those points, someone's fiercely doing it on their paper. <laughs> Tell me what to do. We'll just do it together. One third plus a fourth is... Cool, common denominators, so that would be 12, love it. What would go there? Four, perfect. Three over 12, excellent. Total, seven twelves, what's left? Five twelves is left, okay, perfect. Or it's 12, so did I put 15? Why did I put 15? Is that a math mistake? Who caught that one? A lot of us. A lot of us? <laughs> Am I just giving it to the whole class? I guess so. You guys all caught me, okay. To a um, class. <sighs> I gave up four points this morning. <laughs> Chloe got almost all of them. But, okay. Every time they catch me in a class mistake, okay. like a math mistake, bonus points for you, because I made a mistake oh, cool. and you caught it. Cool. So that's what those were. So I expect it. Remember your interaction and, with this young woman here? That's yeah. Okay. That's, so she was... She yeah. was claiming she wasn't just joking. That, that's funny. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so she was like, "No, is that a point? Is that a math mistake? Okay, yeah, Did yeah, you yeah. make a math mistake, teacher?" And I was like, "It happens. Yeah, even me." So. What a cool way of modeling that then for them. That's cool. So, yeah, I give them some points. I was joking about how the in the first class I really gave up a lot of points today. <laughs> so. But. Cool. So yeah, just to kind of emphasize that mistakes happen, and yeah, it's even the teacher does it. <laughs> As you as a teacher, you have your own style and stuff, but um, it's like when you're in the moment, it's like, well, I could do this, or wait, hold on, the student can do this. So Maybe let them. An issue of restraint? Yeah, and sometimes you need to step in, because there's confidence issues and whatever. It's high school. College-age students would have a little more confidence, and you can you know, get away with, you know, no, nope, that's actually wrong, you know. But little the high school students are a little more delicate, but most of them are seniors and juniors, so we don't have that much. Sophomores is a whole other issue where <laughs> you have to really play that game. But um, with seniors, you can start to treat them more like college students, and that comes into that college class that you have that expectation, like you're college students, I'm gonna treat you like those college students. So, you know, they having that expectation, and when I'm kind of a little, it's not that I'm harsh, but it's like, yeah, you got it wrong, but that's fine. What did we do wrong? You know, we don't care about his feelings as much because our goal is to learn it and get the feelings get in the way. So I don't worry about feelings as much. And they kind of, well, I still have the respect and the rapport with the students, but we know that feelings don't matter as much. I kind of, I don't say that explicitly, but just the way that I treat answers and stuff and still with respect and make it a positive that, hey, you'd made that mistake, but that's great. You know, and we don't care about it if you feel bad because that's, I don't say that, but that's kind of the, we skip past that into the, you know, what this is the results. What can we learn from that? And that's exciting that we get this learning. All right, so I want you guys to practice, find the probability of each of these cases with the thing up here and find the value. This time we're gonna go from the perspective of the company. So from the perspective of the business. So if it breaks down, what's the company out or in or how much money they get? And if it doesn't break down, what's the company out or in or positive, negative, find the net for the company in those two cases, okay? And then calculate the expected value from that. I'll give you, well, let's say five minutes to piece that together, practice that. Because what happens with just that mindset of getting them to succeed while I have them, a lot of things happen like safety nets and training wheels and just do this, do this behavior management stuff so that they will perform while I'm here watching them. And you can do that, but sometimes I think uh, one part of this philosophy that I've grappled with is how to take away those safety nets. 
how to take off those training wheels, mm -hmm. which means sometimes I have to do less, not more. And sometimes that means that they are going to fall and crash and burn, but I have to be able to do that and accept that that's a learning opportunity and they will learn a lot from those failures. Okay. I heard a lot of really great conversations here. Okay. And I could tell that what you guys were conversing most about and arguing most about was what goes in these boxes, what goes in each of these places in the table, right? Which that is true. That is the tricky part of these problems. Because once you know those things, the rest is kind of cake work, right? Yeah. Because it's just multiply and add. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is, the, that is good. That is the thing to focus on. And this is mostly a translation problem, as is a lot of stuff in math. <laughs> if you can translate correctly, then the actual math is probably not so hard. So, excellent job. So, do anybody want to be brave and give us what they think goes in these places? The breaks, so, uh, so explain that. Not quite. Yes. So like that little trick of, which I've learned from my colleague next door, that it's totally okay to be wrong. That is, you do some of your best learning when you make a mistake and then figure out how to fix that because those are more powerful. You'll remember those better than just if you get everything right. If you're doing everything right, you're not really learning. It's just you're, you're just following like a monkey that, you know, steps and stuff. But when you make those mistakes and fix it, that's when real learning happens. So that is a philosophy that I definitely use because I see how that helps my students and helps them become independent learners and, and things like that. So it's things like that. So the being willing to fail and accepting that that is a totally part of it and no shame and that's actually a good thing. Failure is, is awesome and school is a great place for failure to happen because it's a lot more, it's a lot less painful to fail in school than it is in the real world, but it's still a, a teacher there as well. Yes, because what happens if it breaks and it's under warranty? That means the company promises to replace it. So that's a negative? Right, so that's a negative. I did it right. Okay, except, but, there's a but, right? We, they received 48 from the buyer. Exactly right. And they're getting that no matter what, whether it breaks or not. So that's kind of like, purchasing the insurance policy, yeah. you're going to pay that money and it's not coming back. So the, this company gets that extra $48 regardless. So what should we adjust here? 302? Yes. Positive or negative? Negative. Negative, right. Because if, if it breaks, the company is out of money, which is, that should be. If it's under warranty, they should replace it and it's, they're out of money. So 302, you said? Okay, good, good. So, think about what you had to do to get that number, though. What, were th what things did you think about to get that number? They're, they're giving you basically back money that you already gave them. Okay. So they wouldn't be losing or gaining. Right, okay. So, yeah, so very good. So, think about the, the flow of the money. It's coming back to you, but also there was an initial. So, it's a net again, that net idea as well. Excellent. Okay. What else? What else? And good job, Michelle, for being brave and letting us <laughs> tweak that because there's a lot of, when we can fix those mistakes, a lot of good stuff happens. Excellent. So, what else? So, one way that I always keep in mind as an option is. Uh, and kind of maybe the expected value thing that we're talking about, you know, what's the value of this? Well, they could fail. Okay. You know, they could fail and they could crash and burn. And what are they going to learn from that? You know, and that's, they're going to learn because reality is a harsh schoolmaster and they will learn something, hopefully. And if not that time, then the next time that they fail. So do I let them fail here? And I keep that in mind. And because my default, I don't think as a good teacher, my default should not be always to save them. That should be, you know, what's going to help them be successful. 
And I guess in terms of what we talked about with the expected value, what's the probability they're going to be benefited by me helping them here versus the, pro the potential loss that they have of failing here? Would a small course correction get them on track or would it be better that they learn this lesson and fail? So that is kind of something I go through. Maybe I don't think of it as an expected value thing, but I could. But um, that option is available to me, and I, I kind of weigh that because that's, I know that can be beneficial.